Hey everybody, welcome to Always Bored Never Boring and one of my tabletop painting guides. If you're new to the channel and you've never seen one of these before, basically I'm not a good painter. I am a moderately competent painter, but I do these paint guides to show you the methods that I use to get miniatures painted quickly, using lazy techniques and things like that to get things painted and on the table because painted is better than not painted. And today we're going to be looking at painting an Urgle because I keep saying I'm going to be doing a Blackstone Fortress playthrough at some point and I would like to be able to do that playthrough with all painted miniatures. Will it happen? I don't know, but if you never try, then you'll never know, to paraphrase one of the greatest minds of our time, Fred Durst of Limp Biscuit. So anyway, here I have the Urgle um, spray primed in black, and we are going to use Rakarth Flesh to do a base coat. And um, Rakarth Flesh is already quite um, a thin paint. I'm thinning it down a little bit more, and I'm going to do two coats to get a a solid base coat of Rakarth flesh over the whole thing. And what I'm going for with this alien is I'm working on the basis that it's kind of got like a green tinge body and has never really seen the sun, so it's very pale. Um, it reminds me of the, uh, the creeper creatures from Descent. That's the two base coats applied. And we're ready to shade it and I'm using a Thonian camo shade because like I say I want it to be a, a green alien. You can basically use any shade you want really. I guess purple would be quite nice for this. Um, you could go for red to give it a sort of pinky um, fleshy tone but yeah I went for green and what I'm doing is I'm just applying the shade all over the whole miniature um, making sure it gets into all of the recesses not being too fussy. Um, you do need to make sure it's not going to pull too much in the recesses. But there you go, that's it applied. And then you just have to wait for it to dry, which is one of the things that you'll do, spend most of your time doing with my painting techniques is waiting for shades to dry. But there we go, that's the shade dry. And you can see it already looks much better than before it was uh, unpainted. But now we're going to do a Rakar Flesh and Lamian medium mix. And we're doing a 50-50 mix on this. So we've got um, a nice smooth thin down Rakar Flesh. And we are going to go over the miniature again, uh, layering on where the muscles are raised and where there's definition on the miniature without going into the recesses. So leaving the recesses shaded. And this is actually a really nice miniature to paint because it's not very fussy, um, but it's got really strong definition in the muscle tone and the muscle structure, which makes it very easy to do a quick painting technique on. You don't have to worry too much about um, little frills and things like that, and there's no clothing or anything. It's a very nice miniature to paint. Um, it's the kind of miniature that I really enjoy painting, actually, because um, miniatures that get too fussy can be a bit of a chore. This one's nice and easy. So as you can see, I'm just layering up over the muscle structure, being very careful not to go into the recesses, um, taking my time. And when I'm finished, that's what I've got. And you could technically leave it at that stage, but I'm now doing um, the same process again, but I am using a slightly different mix. I am now using um, two parts Rakarth Flesh, uh, one part pallid witch flesh and then one, uh, one part lamian medium uh, so we're getting a, a a lighter tone we're bringing more pallid witch flesh to to brighten it up and we're doing the same thing again but um focusing even more on the raised points of the miniature so you're getting um levels of shading through the uh, through the details and again, this is all just about being careful, making sure you've got your paints thinned right, um, taking your time, trying to follow the definition of the muscles with your brush. And there you go, that's what you get. And I'm actually gonna go one stage further again with this. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to use a pure pallid witch flesh, and um, I'm just going to apply that on the very edges and most raised points of the muscles and the most exposed areas, like the top of the head, the top of the ears, things like that, um, just to make those edges pop a little bit more. Um, down the ridges of the spine is a good one to do, and on the, uh, the abs on the front. And I'm also using Pallid Witch Flesh to pick out the teeth inside the mouth. I'm using Pallid Witch Flesh rather than white, so they're not really bold and stark, they look a bit more natural. 
And that's basically a finished miniature. Um, there's lots of things you can do. You can uh, you can shade around the uh, the sensory elements around the face and the, the sort of eye nostril thingies, but I'm I'm done with it. I just want to get it painted. So I'm now going to use Mechanica Standard Grey and Astro Granite to do the base. The Mechanica Standard Grey just goes down all over the, the top of the base because when you apply Astro Granite, which is a textured paint, you might get little bits that miss and you'll be able to see the black base through it. So putting down a base coat of Mechanica Standard Grey just gives you a better finish. And I've watered it down quite a lot because I want it to be able to flow underneath the feet um, and the raised areas without having to put my brush up under and accidentally paint the, the soles of the feet with grey. So it's quite a thin down uh, Mechanica Standard Grey there just to make sure it flows nicely around the feet and doesn't go over bits I've already painted because it's a nuisance having to repaint bits you've done. And when that's dry, we're going to use uh, the Astro Granite and we're going to use a texture brush tool thingy. And basically you just blob on the Astro Granite and then you push it around. You want to push it up to the feet and things like that. Stipple it so it looks like rock. Um, this is actually a very simple basing technique that I use quite a lot um, just because it's, it's uh, neutral. And then if you use the miniatures, on a battlefield or on a board game it doesn't really detract from the different themes of the areas where they are but anyway so here we go that's the finished thing what I've done as a final detail is I've dry brushed the gray areas of the base with all and gray and then I've edged it with Abaddon black just to make it pop and that really is all you need to do um, I'm quite happy with how that looks it didn't take very long to paint at all a lot of the time was was waiting for coats to dry uh, if you want to do more, um, you might want to put some blood splashes and gore on hands and things like that or in the teeth, but I'm not going to bother. I'm considering that a done deal. Very simple, very quick um, and relatively effective tabletop quality painted miniature. And that's it from me today. I hope you have found this interesting. Um, I've got other painting guides on the channel, uh, which you might want to take a look at. And... Hopefully, I will see you all again very soon. Bye-bye for now. Bye-bye.